can we print PLA inside of a heated chamber? Everything that I've been told and have read says that that is not a good idea and it's a recipe for a hot end clog. But if we're able to pull it off, would it produce stronger parts? If it can, it may be able to get us closer to having a solution for better layer adhesion and those stronger parts as well. So let's find out if it's really possible and then we will strength test those parts if we can. And I'm also gonna try a viewer suggested technique which could end up being the best solution of any of the ideas that we've tested so far. So stick around. There's still a huge difference in strength depending on print orientation. And even though we have faster and more precise printers, the focus really has been on speed and on looks, and we haven't made much progress on print strength. So the hope is if we can find out why layer adhesion is not very good, we will be one step closer to a solution when we'll have parts that both last longer and that we can depend on more as well. In the previous video, we tested several different extrusion paths to see whether they would produce stronger parts. And the winner by a long shot was the fully aligned layers of rectilinear infill because we're extruding into just extruded filament. So it's still hot. And then we have a more isolated hot area below that area that we're extruding into as well. So taking that idea of printing into hot filament, what if we were able to print PLA in a heated chamber? I can't say I've seen anyone print PLA inside of a heated chamber before and the most obvious reason is because we haven't had printers that have chambers for very long but then on top of that they need a heater inside of that chamber as well. PLA melts at a pretty low temperature compared to other filaments but then it softens at a very low temperature as well. So we're talking 60 degrees Celsius but maybe even a little bit less than that. It starts to become a little bit more malleable even in around the 50 degree mark, 55 degree mark as well. So there's a few things that might be getting in the way of us having success on this. And one is that we have filament that's being fed in through these tubes up near the top of the chamber. So that's gonna be a little bit warmer area, probably breeding a little bit higher. As that filament does get fed in through the extruder section, that's not a cooled area. There's actually a motor right behind there. And that means this is probably gonna be an area where the filament is either gonna retain its heat fairly well, or it's gonna get a little bit warmer too. If it gets too warm, it's gonna deform as it passes through the extruder gears, making it more difficult to be fed in. And then last, we have an issue of the heat making its way up from the heated section of the hot end through the heat break into the heat sink as well, making it much more difficult to keep that filament that's up in this section here from expanding, but also from deforming as it's being sent in, forced in to this area where it's supposed to be melting. So there are a lot of reasons why this might not work, but I can't say I've ever tried it before. And until we try it, I don't know for sure. I'll be printing the same samples as the previous video with three different types of extrusion for each of the tests. The fully aligned, which performed really well in the previous video, coming in around 46% stronger with no added material. But unfortunately, the looks, on the other hand, did suffer. The fully aligned with one wall to improve the looks, which was stronger for PLA, but not really by that much. And then the standard method with just six walls. All these parts are printed to be as close to the exact same amount of material required as possible. So for this video though, I'm gonna be using the H2C for these tests. And the reason for that is because I believe it has the best chance of having success, but this may work on other printers as well. I printed on the H2D in the previous video, so I have those results too, but the printer is different. So I wanted to rerun the benchmark tests as well. And I am printing the standard way, vent on the top is open. It's exhausting out the back. That's set to 30%. And lastly, we have the auxiliary fan on, it is 70%. Chamber temperature was somewhere around 30 degrees Celsius during the print. The test came to a little bit higher than we had on the H2D, being able to withstand an average of 121.9 Newtons, so it's 27 pounds or 12.4 kilograms, which is pretty respectable. But if we look at the brakes, it is not very deep and the brakes are only on a single plane, which really isn't ideal. We're looking for something more jagged to demonstrate that we have better layer to layer adhesion. So this is pretty wild. Look at what we have here. Completely finished PLA prints printed in a heated chamber. And our chamber is still at 45 degrees Celsius. So the top flap was not open and it was not open at the back either. It was printed just like what you do for an ABS print. So I'm gonna let these cool with the door closed completely, but I'm gonna come back again and I'm gonna do another print, but I'm gonna crank it up just to see how far I can get it. So maybe I'll do 55 degrees Celsius. 
So at 55 degrees Celsius for chamber temperature, it did not work. It did give me a little warning in advance saying that the temperature was too high and then eventually it said the motor was overloaded and I had to stop the print. So this is how far I got into it. And now I need to try and clean this up. Maybe I'll try the next one at 50 degrees to see if that one will work. So I was able to get a temperature and humidity monitor inside there. It is reading 50.4. I did put a little silicone piece just below it so it wasn't reading additionally higher from the bed temperature, which is 55 degrees Celsius. But we have a chamber temp of 50 degrees. I received a warning saying that the heat break temperature was getting really high, but it's still going strong. So hopefully this one finishes. We'll come back in a bit and see how it did. And we have... 50 degrees Celsius chamber temperature. So that one worked out. There's our 45, 55, not so much. So 55, just a little bit too close to the softening temperature of the filament. And you can see there quite a bit of deformation. So first I wanted to test the prints done in a 45 degree Celsius heated chamber. And we have an average of 137.8 newtons, 31 pounds or 14.1 kilograms, which comes out to about 13% improvement in strength. So that's pretty respectable since the chamber temperature went from somewhere around 30 degrees for a normal PLA print to 45 degrees. So not very big of a difference in temperature for a 13% increase in strength. Next, we can do the prints that were tested in a 50 degrees Celsius heated chamber. But this time the results were not quite as good as the 45 degree chamber temperature. We had 127 newtons, 28.6 pounds and 13 kilograms, which only came out to about a 4% increase in strength from the benchmark. I ran tests on my other type of extrusion pass too, but I don't think in their current state that they're gonna be that useful, mainly because of looks, but we are also missing certain important line types like bridging and like the overhangs as well. So for an alternative, what I thought is if we removed the infill completely, we would speed up the layer time and that means we can be extruding into filament, which is not quite as cool. So I tested the same parts, but in a heated chamber with no infill this time, first at 45 degrees Celsius, And that brought us all the way up to 156.5 newtons, 35.2 pounds and 16 kilograms. And that brings us to a 28% improvement in strength this time compared to the standard. So this time I tried 50 degrees Celsius, but when I tested those parts, they actually came out weaker. And I think it might be because the material starting to soften a little bit and we were not getting a consistent extrusion. The layer bonding on the other hand, as you can see from these test pieces was quite good because it broke really deep. So we had 147.7 newtons, 33.2 pounds and 15.1 kilograms for the strength. So that's a 21% improvement compared to the standard on this machine and 44% better than what we had on the benchmark for the H2D. One suggestion from the previous video really stood out to me because I had already tested that exact same technique years ago and it was a great way to get better looking prints on slow printers. It is known as print by object and I've actually never used it on any of my bamboo printers. So this will be a first. We will do a test first with no heated chamber and then one more test in a heated chamber as well to see how each one works out. Basically what it does is it's gonna print one object at a time, which in theory will keep that part a little bit warmer. It also does not move away from the part until it's finished. We can't unfortunately fill the build plate with this method. It has to slow down as well because those parts would tend to overheat. So there is a little bit of a trade-off and when I tested the first batch of parts, just printed in a vented chamber, they came in at only 87% of the strength of the standard or benchmark parts. So not very good results. I tried the exact same print, but this time in a heated chamber and the results were quite a bit better, coming in at a 12% improvement on the benchmark print method. So not really too bad, but not as good, unfortunately, as the standard print method with a heated chamber and the auxiliary fan turned off. So during this testing, I found out that when you have a heated chamber, you can no longer activate the auxiliary fan. 
So unfortunately, the tests are not completely apples to apples. The vented normal way of printing has the auxiliary fan on at 70 or 75%. And with the heated chamber, it was at zero. So I wanted to eliminate that as a contributor to these benefits that we were seeing. So what I did was I ran the exact same original test that we were doing with the vented chamber, but this time I turned the auxiliary fan off. And what we saw with that was a benefit of only 4%. So the rest of the benefits we were getting can be directly attributed to having a heated chamber. So we learned that printing PLA in a heated chamber is possible. And from what I can tell, it does produce stronger parts. It also seems like we have way too much cooling for the majority of the parts that we're printing. If we're printing five or even 10 parts, that's gonna weaken the layer bonds and we should be able to dial that auxiliary fan way back and end up with stronger parts because of it. It would be great to find a way to print in a heated chamber just one or two degrees below the softening temperature too. So if you have ideas on how to pull that off, please let me know. Another takeaway is that printing with no infill produces stronger parts. It's a little bit counterintuitive. These parts actually use less material and they take less time to print, yet they're actually significantly stronger. So print in a heated chamber and work your way up in temperature until you have confidence that it works well for you. Add modifiers to remove infill in your weak areas and speed up the print time so that each of those weaker areas has around a two second extrusion path for the best results. And unless your print is very small, you can also disable the auxiliary fan. Hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you have ideas for stronger parts, please let me know and I will be getting them into a follow-up video to compare each method. I have my top recommended printers down there below in the video description. And once I have a chance to test the core one, it will probably make it onto the list as well for anyone who likes to tinker or who's interested in the new Bontech index system that's coming out soon. Thanks to each of my patrons for helping to keep this channel going and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel to help with that algorithm as well. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next one.